Hello, welcome to Portland State's Global Supply Chain Management Webinar. My name is Danny Wong. I'm the program director in charge of the Global Supply Chain Program at Portland State. This framework discussion really came from the research work that we did over this past summer. Uh, the work that really contributed to this is really from my former students. Their names are Huda, Washnik, Abdul Kata, and Morel. So, as we live through or still going through this pandemic, we noticed that there are quite a few companies doing quite well, and there are also a lot more companies not doing so well. So as we think about companies that are not doing so well, we really have to understand what is it that they're doing not working, right? In order to answer the question, we really look at many companies over the last few months, and basically it's pretty consistent around all these companies that have not performed well during the, the pandemic situation. Really what it comes down to is the fact that the current global management practice has been mostly focusing in cost, right? So you designing a supply chain to really run on efficiency, run on being the lowest cost, and you make a lot of sourcing decision about outsourcing your production from the US to a lower cost country. By doing that, you basically increase your lead time to act or to react, right? So for example, if you give a PO six months ago that you want to order two containers, two containers full of product. Well, after you, you know, provided the PO to your vendor, it's very difficult to cancel those unless it's already written in the contract. Most likely are not because your lower cost vendors do not have the capacity to procure the raw material and also being able to stop in midstream of their production, right? So once the containers are already loaded on the vessel on its way over to the West Coast port, those cannot be able to turn around. So the fact that you make that sourcing decision so many years ago to really to, to focusing on cost, take products out from the US to a lower cost country, and also trying to operate in more of a leaner environment where more of a JIT uh, rather than building up you know, inventory in case that you need them. So when you talk about JIT inventory policy, you are really not talking about just in case, right? Just in time basically mean as lean as possible, as long as you don't have stock out. Okay, if you don't have stock out, you seem to be okay. So that's what has been happening for the last five or 10 years. In addition to that, a lot of company, they have implemented their ERP system. However, the ERP system are really not meant for provide visibility for their supplier. At the same time, their suppliers ERP system are not visible to the customer. So when you have a kind of system are not talking to one another, you really have no visibility, right? So in addition to those, what else is missing in, in today's global supply chain management uh, uh, area? Well, we we saw a few things, right? One of them is they don't have a budget that put in built in place. They don't have a way to react. They don't have a way to flex the muscle to say, okay, let's spend the money to to make sure that we can react. So they don't have a line item in the budget. Okay, second piece is they don't really think a lot about the geopolitical situation. They don't pay enough attention to what's going on with the geopolitics between the US and other parts of the world, right? So oftentimes they might outsource a lot of their production to many suppliers, but if all these suppliers are located in a single country and if our country and that particular countries are not getting along, what will happen, right? So there could be trade barriers that are being put up and therefore it's gonna impact you significantly. When you're talking about the inventory system, the policy that you put in place, when you outsource, you really add a lot of time in your, in your entire process, right? So if you look at a few other companies in Europe, such as Zara, they have implemented more of what we call near sourcing. When you do able to buy from a near vendors, you have far greater flexibility in terms of when you can give the PO to your vendor, when your vendor can deliver the product to you. So all those comes into place, okay? Lastly, uh, we also noticed that a lot of company are not leveraging the digital technology that many other big tech companies are enjoying. So, you know, there's a survey that 30% of the companies currently out there are not digital focused, and which is to me is a key consideration to do. So how should we pivot? We would like to propose a framework, what we call integrated supply chain agile framework. It's basically, there are really five components to this. What, what is the outcome that we're looking for? What we're looking for is 
having a framework, having a system, future system that we're going to put in so that it has its effectiveness in responding. It's going to be great, right? The speed of response is going to be important. How effective that is in terms of you know, meeting the needs of the time, right? So what are the five components that we're talking about? One is you got to design for what we call resilience, right? In your global supply chain, you got to be resilient. You got to be leveraging digital transformation, okay? Pay attention to the federal regulation in terms of the rising geopolitical tension. Look at your local government. Look at what other think tanks are thinking about or what are they projecting. When you pick all those four components and you put this supply chain control tower in the middle, this is what I call a command and control system, right? Command control system allow you to react much better because all the information will be feeding into this control tower. So now you have full visibility of what you have, what you don't have. So in particular, in a time of crisis, all this information will become very, very helpful, allow you to increase your speed in terms of your response, as well as the effectiveness in terms of getting things done, the right things being done at the right time, correct? So resilience, right? So we have to start thinking about what are the events that could really causing some of this unintended consequence and things that could really cause a huge disruption into our business. So you have to kind of look along the line of what are the chances some of this event will be happening. So, right, you look at the probability and the consequence of those from light to heavy, right? Light to severe, low or high, depending on how you like to use your terminology to describe that. So as a result, you know, focusing on some of those high probability events that have a higher consequence to your company, this is what most people have done, right? Most companies have done, and this based on the most recent McKinsey survey, uh, 2020. So basically, a lot of companies start thinking seriously about dual sourcing, right? You got increasing some of your inventory. You can no longer just focusing on JIT. You got to increase some inventory for your critical product. Think about expanding your supply base, not just focusing on a lower cost supply base, but you also have to be thinking about near sourcing, right? Reorganizing your supply chain in the way that I was talking about earlier. It's a supply chain control method, right? Reducing your skew. You got to reduce some of your complexity. The fewer skew you have, obviously, is easier to manage. But you're not going to reduce it in such a way that it's going to impact your top line growth. Okay, so think about that as some of those things that company are really doing. So how do you build a resilient supply chain? I don't think this is a new concept. I think we all know that you need people, right? You got to have the right people in the right place, right? Put people in the right box. You got to have good, well-defined process so that people know what to do. Right? So the process could also be about decision process, right? Decision making, decision rights, who is going to make the decision, right? And how do you involve your vendor? How do you manage their relationship in this whole people process and tools, right? So the tools in the old days we refer to technology, really those are the tools we are thinking about modeling. How do you modeling the impacts of an event, right? You need to think about that. What technology can we leverage so that we have greater visibility, we have greater insight into what's going on, okay? So when you get the people, the right people at the right place, have the right process, the right tools, now you, you start really doing the, the, you know, what supply chain is all about, right? It's be able to, you know, produce, supply meets the demand, right? We always be able to meet the demand, what the customer needs are. That's really what the essence of what supply chain is. But in the time of uncertainty, in the time of needing to build a resilient supply chain, the supply chain control tower concept is very critical. So how do you build supply chain resilience? The process you go about doing that, obviously there's gonna be some mapping that you have to do. You have to really know where all your suppliers are, right? Uh, traceability, really have to focusing on relationship. If you constantly pushing your supply for lower cost, there's not going to be enough trust in that relationship for you to kind of share a lot of critical data, right? In order to share data, in order to know what your capable, your supplies capabilities are, that relationship matters, okay? So digital transformation, what are the opportunity there? You know, according to IDC, there are more than 59 zettabytes information will be generated this year. So there are lots of information out there. So again, how do we applying some of this 
information, how do we apply some of these newer technologies? So I'm sure you all have heard about artificial intelligence, machine learning. So how do you put all those together, right? So this is where we say, make sure we are leveraging the existing technology that we know that are really useful, uh, AI, machine learning, you know, big data, right? There's so much data that's coming at, at us. So do you have a process put in place to garner, to really, you know, leverage those data so you can get a greater insight into your supplier's situation, into the market demand situation, into the geopolitical situation. And so basically when you have all the information at your disposal and you actually have a way to extract the critical information, now you really have a leverage that your competitors do not have. So one more piece that we really have to think about is this pending, you know, all this rising geopolitical tension between, you know, few countries and, and with the US, what's the US relationship with the Europe? What's the US relationship with China? What's the US relationship with other parts of the world? All those matters, right? Because we're all witnessing the trade war is really putting a dent in terms of the consumer confidence, business confidence, right? So how do you get beyond the trade barriers? How do you get beyond some of this potential regulation that's gonna come? So those are all important factors, right? In terms of the 5G race, which country is gonna have the right technology where we should be thinking about which other country will not be allowed to participate in the 5G race? All those other things, part of the geopolitical tension that we are talking about. So as I think about all these issues, right? Where do we go from here? So this is where I say that, you know, supply chain strategy, right? So if you're in a position where you're gonna drive, you're gonna develop supply chain strategy for your company, you really not ought to think about just on cost, right? You ought to think about how do you build this agile, right? Your supply chain need to be responsive in a time of crisis, but not so costly where every day is gonna cost you more than two times as compared to last year. That is not an acceptable solution, right? So what is the new desirable operating environment for your company? So this is gonna be more like company to company specific, okay? You definitely need to put a line of budget, right? What I like to use the term borrow it from Intel, it's like prepare for the unthinkable. What are the potential events that will happen when you think about, right? So you gotta put a line item to it so that you can start spending some of the money to build up the, you know, flexibility to deal with those, okay? Definitely got to leverage some of this digital technology, right? During this pandemic, we noticed that those companies have pivoted toward digital technology and join the business benefit, right? So for those companies in the retail space, if they have really invested in the e-commerce, then they're able to continue to do business. However, you see that a lot of those brick and mortar company really don't have ability to adjust so therefore they still sit with all the inventory that was you know procured for the spring season which is still not able to sell but for those that have the digital channel able to push the product to the consumer now they're able to enjoy you know the business volume right because now we're stuck at home so we're going to do a lot more e-commerce okay what about supply supply relationship right can you pivot beyond just a low cost country can you dual sourcing where maybe some of those vendors a little bit more expensive when you think about near sourcing, but perhaps you can apply 80-20, right? 80% 80 of your sourcing components will be at the lower cost country where the other 20% perhaps could be at a near sourcing location where it gives you the flexibility that you need, right? Also pay attention to some of those think tank foundations such as the Gates Foundation. They're predicted about the you know, oncoming pandemics that the impact it will have, right? So if you look at Eric Schmidt for his own foundation, they already talk about potentially there'll be some decoupling, potentially there'll be some two different internet where one is, you know, run by the West, the other one is run by the East. And therefore, you know, all those things could potentially have an impact. So let's not just sit and, you know, assuming they're not gonna happen. Why don't we take advantage of some of the budget line, line item that we put in, some of the budget that we have available, start building some of those basic, you know, steps that we could potentially dealing with that. Maybe assigning people to start monitoring those more, you know, ready available. 
So the bottom line is we got to get ready, right? So the way we get ready is basically you cannot sit. You got to start thinking about this. You got to put the right people in the right box. You got to put people not just in the right box, but also have the right processes, right? You got to give them the right tools. And you got to rethink about your organization. How do you put in this, you know, supply chain control tower concept so that it can really serve the purpose, okay? So that's what I'd like to share with you. So I really want to take a quick minute to thank you for your time for joining our conversation today. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, okay? So thank you so much.